Day and age, 2012. It's, um, we're heading into the, the day. This will be the evening of um, Friday, um, June 22nd, June 22. And we have a, a Sabbath, a Shabbat coming up, and the portion for this particular Sabbath and this particular cycle is um, Shalach. Shalach or Shalach, Shalach, Shalach. There was one who was sent on one, one on ones who are sent on. The basic idea is to send. And this particular portion of our um, Torah readings and seedings, as we remember the Shabbat and we keep it set apart and we study and show ourselves approved to God as workmen that need not be ashamed. Now, what is the work? This is Jah's words. And then we talk about Jah work, and that scripture from uh, Timotheus, from Timothy, from the Epistle to Timothy, the Hawaii of Paulos Epistle. It gives us some very, very important instructions concerning study. Now, it's been a couple of bits since we had our last. Um, live uh, lecture or live lecture presentation focusing a little bit more behind the cameras and using some of the word pictures to basically describe and to articulate, to explain, to help one get the vision. Because John's word says without a vision of where no vision is, you understand? People, they live loosely, they live libertine, if you understand the true interpretation from the world of art, from the Mitzhah, Kedus, of Nusa, the Gaza, Kedalawi, Haila, Salazi, Kedus, Sabatach. People live loosely, but then the King James translates that the people perish. Ultimately, that is what happens. Now, connected with that perishing of our people, the lost sheep, Contrary to that, or opposite to that, is a true vision. But the but this vision has been suppressed. The half of the story that hasn't been told. This has been suppressed. That uh, another narrative has been told of we the black people of the world. But hallelujah to the King of Kings and his Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Gitachina, and Hanatachin Yesus Christos. All praises be to the majesty of the name of Yeshua for this half of the story that the whole vi the whole prophetic vision opens up to us. Now, there's a couple of things that um, we want to touch on before we really go into this particular political um, portion coming. And we still have some hours. This is in the, the evening time, what one's called the, the night time. More correctly, it's the shadow state as we're going into. Um, the Friday, and then hopefully we'll, we'll have the opportunity to um, share a lecture or a devar, a, a devar Torah, a, a, a speaking of the word of the Torah, which is when we get the idea on a certain level of, 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 of the sermon in Christianity coming from the Judaic roots. We have a devar Torah speaking on that particular portion of the Torah. So for us, this is our Aras Tathari, the Sabbatical Study, so we call it the RSS. Yet we wanted to speak to the disciples, to the Dekamas Amorit, and to all of those who have complied with the basic preliminary steps in this particular order, this particular society, and in this particular mansion of Aras which is the 
divine and human signs of his imperial majesty. Now, a couple of points I want to touch on. Let's, let, let, let's go through this for a moment. First of all, first of all, there's many um, brothers and sisters, as we said, who have complied. And, and your, your messages, at least the majority of the particular messages, have been presented to I and I. So we're, we're up to date, at least, on some of the correspondence that has come into LOJ, even though we directly deal with them, do not handle that particular respective department or that particular office. So that's not our major um, um, station, role, responsibility, or function. Because many who are offering to, to, to volunteer and, and are recognizing that they have been called and, and they're saying, Brethren, I'm an artist. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a visual artist. And, or I'm, I'm, I have another skill, uh, you know, I'm into theater, I'm into music. What can I do? I want to say, what can I do? How can I volunteer? How can I get involved? The first thing is to get informed. You know what I'm saying? This is why the teaching, this is why these, these postings, these video postings, these lectures, even though sometimes we think that we might go a little bit too far or too, you know, go off on a tangent, you know what I'm saying? But, faithfully speaking, we know we are following that initial, that, that inspiration of job to speak on a particular subject matter. So we want to speak on discipleship right now and speak to those who have sent forth applications for discipleship and, and they wonder, well, well, what's going on? The harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. You understand? And what we've been doing from 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 day to day, from from Shabbat to Shabbat, from from moon to moon, and over these several years, from year to year, is 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 to disseminate the teaching and see who is responding. And, and this is beautiful at this present time that because of maybe the internet, because of all this multimedia word can circulate and share and, and, and things can be presented to ones as though we're really there. And this too, in our estimation, is, is, is prophecy. Yet, to speak to the disciples and to speak on discipleship, and this is why um, we, we often point to the various different Torah books and, and Devarim, Devarim, notice the connection to Hebrew? Devar, and it's like to say Deber, Deber, Deborah, but Deber or Debar means word in the Hebraic. So that's the, 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 the whole interesting kind of teaching. You've got to get this. This is why we talk, when we talk about discipleship. First of all, there must be a certain discipline. You understand? Ones coming into discipleship are saying, I am willing to be, to, to learn. You understand? To learn of this, to be in yoke, in the, in the yoke of the discipline. What is Christ's yoke? It's clear that it's, it's the Word. It is based on that Word. You understand? The word is so important, but Word is activated by faith. Now, if you've noticed some of the videos that we have posted over the, just say, the past month, we've touched on um, faith, and, and we've also the, the subset of words, faith, um, trust, and, and confidence, as well as three lights. Let's just go over some of these these basic um, these are basic principles. We can't even call them basic elementals, because you need to understand what the basic foundation is. You understand that we're building on His foundation. We can't establish any other foundation. We submit to you that the reason why the movement of the Rastafari movement, the movement of job people, and even by extension, Ethiopian World Federation, repatriation. Why is this in this period of inertia? There's an inertia. The movement is not really moving in its true prophetic or historic sense towards the goal. That's because something has happened to, there's a loss of vision. You understand? Know the vision is, is, is word power. Vision is word power. We can only get the Jah's vision by getting Jah's word. But we can only 
overstand and comprehend God's word by that by that 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 new birth, that being born again. Therefore, what is that? We have to overstand. Well, what is this whole idea of being born again? And for us, as Rastafari, based on our divine heritage, what does that mean to us, or what must it mean to us to be in in proper um, relation, proper orientation, in other words, I think orientation is a key word. We see there's a lot of disorientation with the flag. When we point out the flag point, some people defend that so-called argument, but the evidence is very clear. You understand that the Ethiopian flag and the imperial flag, green is in the uppermost. Now, true, it is true that those tri-colors are the African, we can say, so-called colors, the, the, the red, the yellow, and green, or the green, yellow, and red. And we see that the flag in the east has the green on top, and the flag in the west has the red on top, like the Ghana flag. So let's understand that in that sense. You know, but to say that the Rastafari flag, or this imperial flag, and, and some people say, well, that point is a, a minor point. Of, no, no, it's not. Because it's not in, it, it's, it's, it's not bearing faithful witness. You understand? And that means there's a lack of knowledge. And the prophetic word states to us that my people, what, perish because of a lack of knowledge. Now, the key word, Bamarinya, with the word perish, in that particular quote from Hosea, we then look at His Majesty's Bible, the Rab, or the Revised and Hard Bible, in the New Testament sense, that's those who are lost. So the idea of being lost, you understand, and the idea of perishing, according to the Ethiopic keys and the Amharic, according to the language of His Majesty, how they connect. So when we talk about learning the language, we're not just talking about learning just to speak in the sense of, you know, impressing people but learning it on the inside. We're saying we have to focus on the inner. You understand? And the inner is that which is the eternal, not on the outer. So when we look at the lack of unity and, 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 and collective and individual and corporate responsibility, that's a challenge in the Federation. Because the Federation, the Ethiopian World Federation, the repatriation, the land grant, Shashimani is still the issue. See, Shashimani is still the issue. And in the Torah portion coming up, Shalach, which speaks about the, the 12 spies who were sent into the, the, the promised land to spy it out. And the fact that 10 came back and brought back a negative report in which 2 million people wandered in the wilderness and lost Solomon opportunity via the, uh, the, the blessing, in a sense, was, was stolen from them by Satan. Satan encouraged them in the fear and the phobia. And, and when we compare the Beta Israel, let's just, we, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get into the discipleship point right, right, right here, because there's a, there's a connection with this. In fact, what we're going to do is hold that for the 30, I think it's the 37th, this is the 37th Torah portion. I think we did 36. So the 37th Torah portion is is, is the portion that is um, that is, is is upcoming. Shalach, and it's very interesting because the Ethiopian World Federation 1937, all is known. So if we look at the the um, the, the number, the, the link with the, the the number. It's the 37th weekly Torah portion. 1937, and check out Psalms 37. We'll get into some of that, ho hopefully, job willing, in the next, in the in one of the upcoming vids, because there's a couple of different subject matters, and they're all related, but in order for them to be best understood, well, we're going to try to discipline ourselves, even in bringing forward this, this lecture, this presentation, so we can touch on each of these subject matters, as well as pointing out the bridge, how they link with with other related matters to us in this time, this is real time. So we're, we're, we're showing and proving that this Torah study 
it's not just learning about the Bible. It's not just learning about the pie in the sky. It, it is instructing us in the real world. You understand? In the real world, how to come out of this confusion and chaos. The first level of, of coming out of Babylon is not just getting a plane ticket. The first level of coming out of Babylon must be in your heart and your mind. And the first level of coming out of Babylon is not called coming out of Babylon, but biblically speaking, it's called repenting and being born again. Repenting and being born again, the metanoia. The metanoia. Now, in speaking on discipleship, we want to say a couple of words, as we said from the outset, concerning um, discipleship. Because many have um, um, demonstrated their, their, their goodwill, um, their, their willingness, should we say, as well as their the first level of expression of their faith. Let me go through this once again. I touched on this before, but I think we were speaking on some other related matters. Let's touch on this once again. So we're going to speak on discipleship on the Rastafari. This is like a Rastafari discipleship update. Because there are ones who have sent in their applications. They have also sent in the particular um, um, remittance fee. And that, rep that remittance fee or that um, admittance fee, which is the $10, is, is similar if you've been studying the Torah portion. It is, it, is, it is similar with that which is offered by the people to the priests. But in its, in its um, corporate, organizational sense, that now is allowing us, as we are preparing additional materials, you understand, to prepare certain materials that are exclusively for the disciples, but unfortunately because of lack of, um, a lack of, because of the lack of knowledge and the lack of willingness and the lack of, uh, there's a lot of confusion. That, that our people have gone. This is why we've, we've had to touch sometimes, touch on an issue over here and clarify it because many people believe a lot of these lies and don't recognize that these are lies and what they do ultimately is that they cause these mixed up moods and attitudes so that we as a people who are, who are uh, ostensibly saying the same things, you understand, concerning who we are, Israelite, Africa, Ethiopia, His Majesty, yet how come we cannot come together, you understand, and form committees, you understand, how come we cannot come together, you understand, and focus on the community, the common unity, see, the commonwealth, the Ethiopian World Federation is our commonwealth, let's understand that, that is our commonwealth. But the first thing is coming to that common, that common sense or that common um, unity that, that helps us both individually and collectively to form the basis of community. You see, and I, I submit to you that the lack of, of, of progress in the movement, especially over the past 40 or so years, and even in this time of the iniquity of the Amorites. That 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 is because of um, how can we say that is because of a lack of faith, unbelief, a lack of faith in Jah. Most say, okay, I and I don't believe, I and I know. Now we understand that reasoning and that worked for that particular day and time because the resources that we have available now, they wasn't available at that time. You understand? They wasn't available really for us to really recognize that what, 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 what belief really is or how it really figures or what is the Hebraic, what's the Greek and the Hebraic. See, the Greek and the Hebraic at the first level before we can get to the world of heart. And let's explain this right here in the Rock of the Bible show. So let's call this Ras the Farai or Ras the Farai, right? Ras the Farai. And this is discipleship. Uh, uh, now, the core of discipleship, of course, 
in um, discipline. And I think you should, should look up the word discipline, you know, and, and a good um, Webster dictionary. And we touch on some of the tools. So a lot of things that we've already spoken on in various videos and some videos going into more depth with what we're seeking to do right now is to um, get that in print. You know what I mean? Get that in print or to to formulate a lot of our notes and studies so we can publish it in, in printed form and others now, other scholars, you understand, and other disciples, brothers and sisters, can then um, use that as a reference, you understand, so they can study it for themselves, you understand, so this is one of the reasons why the book publishing and the printing process is so very important. We can, we can now recognize the wisdom of his majesty in the fuller sense of bringing in the printing presses into Ethiopia, as well as the importance of the written word. The, the written word is very, very important. Now, there's a five or four key to this particular discipline, right? Now, Christ speaks about it as being a disciple, right? Being a disciple, right? Being a a disciple. Now, I don't know if you ever, if you ever uh, did a little study, and this is a very good study. So there's tools, there's resources. Some of these tools and resources are out there, and some brothers and sisters just don't know it. I mean, they don't, they don't really recognize maybe they be on the internet, but they might not know exactly, you know, what to search for, or might need a link with those things. This is why I'm working on our website and also working with our faith-based partners out there. Um, and there are a few of them that we are working with, other brothers and sisters who are following the call and their inspiration. It may be their business, it may be maybe they're into music, or they are artists of some level or another, and they're also seeking to volunteer. And what is the purpose of the artist? What is the purpose of, of these gifts that we have been, been given? First of all, discipleship is so important to recognize, first of all, what is, what is the truth? What is the testimony of Christ? You understand? Um, who is the true God? You understand? What is, what is the evidence? What is the record for that? You understand? Which is the Word. See, we need that Word. The Word now, it affects our, our confidence in John, right? In the Almighty. And that goes a long way, because see, a lot of folks, um, what's really preventing one is the lack of confidence. The devil is using doubt, or ones are caught up on fear, or, or what people say, or what they think, you know, even what they see in the world. You know, they're judging things by how they appear, and don't recognize the appearance and the form of this world is, is in a, it, it, there's a lot of changeabilities your sense in the external. They focus too too much on the exoteric and the esoteric, the, the inner. This is why we, we did those lectures speaking on the individual responsibility that even even especially I self who have now stepped forward have to always check that anchor. You understand that anchor because you know when you go out and you seek to live godly according to Jah. I mean, the, I mean, the temptations, the, the trials, the tribulation, but they become easy and overcomable if you recognize what, the, what this discipline is, and then discipleship and discipline, right? But in bringing this particular message forward is to say, brothers and sisters, if you haven't received any direct response as of yet, I personally apologize to each of you because that is, that is under I and I responsibility, this particular society of His Majesty and these particular operations. It's not to make any excuse about that matter, that there's many things that we should be um, much more on top of. In fact, our progress, if we look at the Federation, Ethiopian World Federation, the Constitution and Bylaws, and, and the historical um, record, of the organization, we should be, as a people, much further along in our forward movement, even in the settlements that we have in Africa. In fact, the real issue should be 
um, the African or the black um, um, exodus. That should be the real issue. And blacks looking at the, 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 the fact that the earth is the Lord's. See, but some folks only trust God as far as, you know, as far as where they are used to, their hood, their ghetto. We, we, we've been forced to be divided, um, um, divided and conquered. But as you start to see the big picture, you understand the big picture is the vision. You see, the vision is based on that word, because the word is what powers the vision. But, but, but see, faith and the amen, as we know it from the core Afro-Shemitic root of the word, from the Hebrew, from the Hebrew, the Monmen, or the Monmen, or the, the Saint, you know, the Hebrew and the Ethiopic, you get these core words like faith. Even within the Egyptian mysteries, we know of the Amen. You understand? Or the Amen. Some say the hidden one, the Amon. It's interesting if you look up Amon or Ammon in, in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. That's why some of these books that we speak about, like the Metaphysical. Bible dictionary. Ultimately, this is discipleship information. But those who have made a positive, um, a positive uh, um, affirmation by complying with um, the instructions to be a part of this um, society and to study along with I and I, because you have not received anything formally as of yet. Um, please do not despair. Your information is on file, and um, even one, uh, one or two people even sent it twice. I think sent sent in the applications twice, not knowing whether or not it was received. So we're doing everything in our power, or better than that, we're going even beyond our own power, and are seeking to do it in in John's power. You know, and part of it is to preach on this, part of it is to make this known to ones and ones. That there is a, that we live in a very blessed time, and, and we can see it, and we're willing to, to, to be a, a, a speaker, you understand, or a preacher, or, or one to, to, to blow that trumpet on it. But we do need the involvement, uh, the informed, um, and the faith-based involvement. That's why we put um, the church cool is so important before we get to the governmental, you see. And that is what is wrong with a lot of folks and folks and their idea, you understand, their uninformed idea concerning this organization, the Ethiopian World Commission. Yes, they are I and I brothers and sisters. We love them. You understand? But they, many of them hate I and I because... I and I has been a rebuke, you know what I'm saying? And because I and I is like the one written, a repairer of the breach, a renewal of the ways to dwell in or to tabernacle in. And they are caught up on certain traditions, you know what I'm saying? Certain traditions, vain traditions, and other traditions that, you know, the way it was done in Jamaica or the way that we used to do it back in the days down south. We have to get beyond that. In fact, we were going to do another video. And we told certain ones in some of our more private communication, we're going to do another video where we said, we were going to say, we need to get past this nigga shit. This is going to call it right back. That was going to be the title. We need to get past this nigga shit. And you know, this nigga shit, really, I think black shit. This black shit. The nigga shit, we already passed that but as, as our behavior. But only we can get past this, this level. In fact, one brother had sent a comment and he said, how can I find these true brothers? And I apologize that I wanted to, I think I wasn't signed in right there. My machine started acting. I had to restart. And so I didn't respond to it. But it was on my mind. I was thinking about that. Like when the brother said, how, you know, like, yo, how can I find? I think it was, how can I find these real or these true brothers? And I would say, first and foremost, you know what I'm saying? It's the prayer. It's the prayer. You see, we don't even understand the the power that we have in this covenant, covenantal relationship, you know what I'm saying? And, and when we start to um, grow in the faith, study the word of Christ, he demonstrated his majesty, bore witness to it when it says the Bible. But it's more than just 
a, a holy moly kind of idea. The Bible, oh yes, this is the Bible. No, we have to really get in there. We have to really study. We have to know and have to vigorously even debate with each other on, well, what is John saying here? And what is the words he's using? What's the, because in it is our code. In, sense, in it is our salvation. He's already sealed it up. He's already testified to it. And as we are growing even more in our own, um, in, our, in our personal tribe, we're trying to make this clear to others that even when you know or think you know, it's good. But it doesn't stop there. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no end to this kingdom. There's no end to, 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 to knowledge of questions. Uh, um, education, the quest for knowledge, as Matthew teaches, is stopped only at the grave. But he says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. And how Yeshua HaMoshia is our example. He is our blameless creator, Yosem, our Savior, our Lord and Savior, as men of Yeshua HaMoshia. Why does his majesty say to us, he says in the autobiography, book one, Ethiopia, um, he was here now, uh, yeah, Ethiopia, Renja. Why does he say in that practice, the mechanism, he says um, that they may make note of the word that you have spoken. He's praying to the son. And then in the Falachi, the Oriana Falachi interview, some of you all probably know that that's a, that's a special fee. Kasufei, Sesufi, where he says enough, where she keeps asking him about when you die, when you die, you're mad, see what, what's going to happen after that. And basically he's, he's explaining that, that this, this dynasty, this, 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 um, this throne, this authority, this divine authority, it goes, it go, it, it goes back even further than, than the time of Adam appearing in the Garden of Eden. Of course she didn't understand what he was saying. But in that very same Oriana Falachi interview, his match is so very cryptic. He said that he was able to he gives thanks and, 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 and his joy that he can serve Ethiopia as a father would serve his own son. And you know, we thought that was very cryptic, but we overstood it because we're overstanding the gospel. And we're studying even John's gospel, chapter sixteen and seventeen, and you begin to discover that mystery of God in Christ. Now, all of that is so important for us in our growth, in our awareness of what's going on. But we also have to recognize that that personal, you know, saying that personal responsibility. So when we talk about discipleship, discipleship chiefly and keenly is that personal discipline, that personal responsibility. Yeshua HaMoshiach, Yesus Christos, Geta, Yesus, he says that if anyone um, would, would, would come after him, you understand, like to say, be his disciple, they must deny themselves. That's the first, the very first thing. They must deny their ego. They must deny the, the, the old self. You understand? In other words, the, the, the uh, when they come to Yeshua, when they come to God, first of all, to get to God, to the true God, we must come through Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? And in Yeshua, he, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Firstly, for Israel, for we as the ethnic, the ethnic Hebrews and Jews, we, the so-called black people of the world, who in truth are Ethiopian Hebrews, but it also extends to the Gentiles. Now, if you look, it's interesting because the Gentiles have more faith in this, this Bible, even if it is for some prosperity. They, say, they see that word there. They recognize in a kind of a legalistic sense that, well, basically, it's not just to the Jew, but the Gentile has, it, has a blessing in it, and they, in a sense, name it and claim it, and they have faith and job. He reigns on the good and the evil alike. You understand? Know if one conforms to him, you know, if one just trusts John and trusts Jesus, you understand, know just for prosperity to pay down their mortgage. And in a certain sense, for certain ones who do have a measure of faith that, that the Lord regards, because that's according to their knowledge. They don't they don't know anything about anything else. They've been taught, you understand, know um, to, to trust the Lord for 
for, for wealth or for health and other things, and, and it works. And then many of us who say, we know the Father. You understand? We know His Majesty is the conquering line of the tribe of Judah as per revelation, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and the Ethiopian connection, the throne of David. And now we've gone through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. So we're at that point of Joshua and Caleb right now. And it becomes very interesting to myself. I've gone on the record and, and, and this is written if I can find this. I don't know whether we have scanned it yet. But I said that at that time, Rastafari, the movement of Rastafari back in 1991, 92. Um, was lost, was astray, and they got bun out. See, they, they, they bun I and I out or something. I mean, they bun I and I out, but I still was among the brethren, and they still, many ones even still had I and I as an heart teacher. And, and privately, many folks, many ones told I and I that, that, that what you're saying is correct, but it's almost like it is what it is. But then I ask, well, what is it really? It is what it is. What is it really? And 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 who you are and where you stand in the struggle. In other words, who are you? And where do you stand in this struggle? Who are you? That is probably one of the the first questions that one has to really, really check out. You see a lot of us we long for the gathering all the brother and sister in and they everyone wearing their clothing and in their ice gold and green. And that's beautiful. I mean that is oh man. The Rastafari family is beautiful. You understand? However, what is not beautiful right now, you understand, is the fact that the true spirit of his majesty and his Christ is not reigning in our heads. And it was in knowledge and in our hearts. That means being being grounded, being rooted. The Obasansi is in head and in heart. Because then the body, the physical, the, the out of the worldly, you understand, aspect. We're not making no progress. They tell us some tell us that the land is gone. That there is no more promised land. Yes, Hallelujah gave it, but one's lost it. And so ones and ones are beginning to become psyched out. I'm here to tell you that no such thing is true. I'm here to tell you like Joshua and, and, and Caleb, you understand, who said 40 years ago they could have done it. They could have went in and claimed the land. In, in, in a sense, there were 12 pioneer settler families, and we, we're looking forward to get into that reasoning and, and, and the this particular 37 um, um, uh, Rastafari medical study portion known as uh, Shalach in the Hebrew, you understand, where the scouts were sent, because it's an important lesson that we have to learn from, from, from that in particular. I think it's probably one of the most important lessons in this present um, dispensation for us at this present point that we are in near and far, for all Rastafari people mainly, all Rastafari black people in particular, you understand? But the righteous Gentiles have a role, but most of y'all don't know what does they have job concerning them. You say, I like white people, I don't mind them, I hate white people, for what white people did, or how can a white person become a rock? And, and, and see, why you're feeling is that you are praising the King of Kings with your mouth even though your heart, you know saying, your heart and your mind is far from it. And, and then we wonder why is the situation, this present situation, you know saying, where ones and ones, many times for the lack of Rastafari community, almost forced to go back into the Gentile world or to, or to, 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 to kind of, you know what I mean, do that Babylon thing, you know what that's why I pointed out the movie Exodus, the 1964 Newman movie. You know, I, I, at one time I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get that movie either. And I hope some of y'all would like that too, but also be like I and I was where I didn't get it at first. But now that we understand a little bit more of who we are, 
and where we stand in the struggle, that we would watch that movie and begin to peep, oh, this is why Ross Yadinos or Wyndham Yadin said that I get it right now. I, I really understand. Yes, it's the Jews who call themselves Jews. Jehovah's and yes, but even that idea, ones have not studied. They have not read for themselves. Let's stick with the five, the five-fold discipline. Now, what's interesting about the five-fold discipline of the disciples? You, you already know that the the Bobo um, Shanty they have the black star. Now, some people don't like the five-pointed star because they believe that the five-pointed star is, is evil just because the five-pointed star. Now, there's a great mystery, and, and, and when I say mystery, it's a secret because one seems like they don't know it, but some do know it, but others just don't get it. You see, for, for I and I, he, he gives to I and I his secrets, as Matthew chapter 13, to the disciple. So, the disciple is given these secrets of wisdom, so we're going to put right here, next to disciple and discipline. We're going to put right here, let's put this star right here, right? Now, we know the black star from which one? This is the upright star. You have to understand that the difference in this and the upside down star. Symbolically speaking, this star is, 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 is female or, or the feminine, or we could say the church, the five pointed star with one point up. The five pointed star with one point down, you understand, is safe on its. Let's understand, let's. It's over when it's displayed as it has been and often is in this in this real world display. So you can understand that because a lot of folks have been saying, oh, the five pointed star, that's an evil symbol, blah, 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 blah. And, and we say, um, wish it time. Wish it time. I mean, is this star used evilly? But isn't anything, don't they pollute water? Don't they pollute the earth? Are they polluting the food? You know what I'm saying? All right. So, the fivefold discipline, Christ teaches, he says, if I won't be a disciple, he must deny himself. He must pick up his cross, and he must follow me. Right? That's what Christ says. Christ teaches this. That if anyone, if any man, is willing or seeking to be his disciple, what must they do? Now, as far as our discipleship study, this is a work in progress. You understand? But more of the responsibility has come down on a few of us. Like with the prisoners outreach, we, we've had for, it seems like, not forever, but it seems like for almost 10, 15, maybe a little less than 20 years, um, we've been about a regular prison ministry for many of our self-professed Rastafari um, brethren and brothers who are incarcerated. And the testimonies that we gather from those brothers, they might not have been truly brethren or brotherly before, according to spirit and in truth. But their particular experience of incarceration is like a wake-up call. And, and many of these brothers, brothers who are still incarcerated, and we've been ministering to them over the years, I mean, it's, it's something that really touches your heart on a certain level, because the fact that there are many mansions, as it were, in our Father's house, I mean, there's there's 12 tribes, there's Bobo Shanti, there's the Naya Bingi, there's various other churchical groups, so forth and so on, and other, other gatherings, different sort of gatherings, fellowships, groups of us, you know, and, and, and the fact that only in the Barbados Christian church as well, and the fact, the sad fact is that it's almost like some felt that it was almost not by accident, but just just it was a blessing that they got to find out that. And this is this is when I and I were virtually trotting almost alone. There was a handful 
of, of brother and that and sister and that was why they support I and I that I was I was a monk and that did assist with very limited assistance here or there. Yet we took it as our own personal responsibility. Yeah, because once you start to, you know, get involved, you understand, with our brothers, and this is fulfilling our Christian duty, you understand, let's just understand that. But we sort of ask, why doesn't, well, Bobo, Shanti, and 12 tribes, I would have to, as mansions, you know, I say honorable, you understand, overall, you know, we all have these other minor issues and ones who creep amongst us and are not of us, but some of these are the ones that bring shame to our respective houses, our respective mansions, or even our respective ministries. Hopefully, when, when, when we're dealing with a problem, how do you deal with a problem? Most people say, if you got a problem, just solve it. No, no. You can't just solve it. When you deal with a problem, the first thing you have to do is acknowledge. You have to recognize that's a problem. It's like what they say with Alcoholics Anonymous or people on drugs or, or, or addicted to sex or put up in, in, in one of these other addictions that they have counseling for. This is the first thing when somebody has a problem, they have to admit. They have to admit it. You can tell them. I can tell them. Others can tell them. But it's only when they wake up one day and say, oh and they get it for themselves, that a new day in their, in their life, in their experience, and I, and I say this for more reasons than one. Part of it is also in trying to make others believe that we are not to make others believe. You know, that we're here to, to, to testify, to, 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 to preach the word, and, and everyone is a preacher in God's house, everyone who's of age, I say of age, I'm saying of maturity, of a certain knowledge, ability, and their faith doth follow. You know, in other words, you, 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 know, you know, they have a certain knowledge of it, I and mean, you can't testify to something that you don't know about, or, or say that you accept something as true, that in your heart you doubt. But if many of us do have, at some time or another, the, 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 the greatest tool of Satan is fear. The greatest tool is fear coupled with doubt. And in the Torah portion coming forward, the 37th Torah portion, we are going to read and study, you understand, and you're going to hear more about how 12 spies were sent into the Promised Land. Now those who know about the Ethiopian World Federation, let's keep this in mind. There were 12 pioneer settlers on that land, which probably could maybe hold at least hundreds of families. You know, when you look at the, the whole scope of the original land grant that was given by the Rusin and the the Ethiopian, by the King of Kings of Ethiopia, Ketamawi Hazi Salansi, to we, the black peoples, or we, the Ethiopians, abroad. See, so there's something also in here that you begin to understand that the preamble says we the black people. Article 1, right, section 2A, it refers to us as Ethiopians abroad. So what has happened between the preamble, right, where we established and ordained this constitution, at least our ancestors did, and we come to that point of of, of being Ethiopian, we are recognizing both our nationality. Now I want you to get this right here. So there's some change. Right? There's a name change between the preamble, understand that, and Article 1, Section 2A. So really, that's what we have to get over this black thing. That would be more a part of the get over this black thing then. Every time something happens to a black person in America, it, it could be it could be wherever in America. You know, there's fifty something states, fifty states, right? In America. It could be East Coast, West Coast, uh, up north, down south, it could be anywhere. It could be any sort of but as soon as it's publicized or published, 
it's the, it's the, it's the psychology that we use. We start to think, oh, black people, such and such and such. Even though there are many people who are our color, we don't recognize the differences. And see, those differences are there for a reason. It's just like what I'm about to say right here. I want you to note it and remind me if I don't explain it or if you don't understand it well enough for yourself. Even though black people in America who were brought in the transatlantic, trans Ethiopic ocean slave trade, right? The lost sheep of the Beit Israel who were enslaved over here in the West and stripped of our name, of our identity, so forth, and, um, and, and so on, are all technically, biblically speaking, Hebrews, even for the fact that they crossed over this ocean that was known as the Ethiopic Ocean. I want you to connect these facts here. Now, see, a lot of this on the historical record is true, but if you look at how they have changed the way things appear, if you don't study it, you won't recognize it. You see, and if you and if you think about law, how successful lawyers, right, and advocates are, they have to study it for the case history. That's why I keep saying, get informed and get involved. You see, for those of you, let me speak to the artists out there for a moment, brothers and sisters, and ones who have certain talents, like 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 as artists or musicians, even the musicians especially those who are singers and players of instruments, how can you be of, 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 of service? How can your talent, your gifts be of service, both within this ministry and within the greater outreach in the, in the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, the very kingdom of God? First of all, you must be informed. What I mean by informed? You must know what, what, is, what is the promise. What is that promise, that hope, that firm hope and expectation? Job said, what does, what does the prophecy say? And where are we right now, Job said, in that particular prophecy? But all of that knowledge helps one to see within their, their mind's eye, right? To see within their head and heart, but in their mind's eye to see the vision. Go out of vision where there's no vision, the people perish. And the people are lost right now because they have lost the vision. You see, and that true vision, right? That true vision is contained in the main aims and objects and the preamble of this constitution right here. But in the further detail, you see, whatever's not, when it says divine heritage in this little book here, which is the constitution. Let you check out the Constitution and Bylaws of the Ethiopian World Federation. When it says divine heritage here, it is referring at a basic level. This is the Bible, Schofield, reference Bible. This is the discipleship Bible. So if you have signed up or you have sent in your application, you say, okay, I haven't received anything as of yet, a response. If you haven't received a response as of yet, I personally... Rasi Adino Stefan, Ras Ayadonis Stefan, Wendy Miyadin. I apologize. And the only word I would say is that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers or the co laborers are few. But for this for this ministry, I apologize. And I think that, that will be forthcoming and forthwith. If you have an email or something and are concerned about it, you'll send drop us uh, a contact at www.lojsociety.org or better yet those who have let's, let's, do, it, let's do this like this and a brief message a brief, I heard the message on discipleship from, from June um, 2012 you understand and I'm still here I'm, I'm watching the vids let us just know a little bit about you know how your progress is coming along you know it's because we're getting to the point in the time where Delegation, you understand? See, we don't want to delegate if this is like we don't want to delegate to one to 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 cook if their skill is really as a mechanic, a, a auto mechanic. And say if they're an auto mechanic and we don't have any car, they still have a a, a valuable gift or talent. But that means we got to get a ride. 
you know what I'm saying? In order for their, their or vehicles, in order for their skills, in that sense, to have a logical um, application. But that doesn't mean the person sits down and says, well, I got this skill and therefore I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait until they get some cars. No. As a disciple, one must get into discipline. Now, this five point is started there for a reason. We, we, we will fill it in, but we don't probably have enough, um, uh, what you call it, it's a fill that is the black star. It's the idea of the black star and the black upright star, the one point um, um, going up. Now, um, let's touch on what, what, what Christ said about if anyone chooses, right, if anyone would come after, right, if anyone would come after him, you understand, he should, he or she should do what? They should deny themselves, pick up their cross, and follow him. Why is that, right, why is that, why is that very important? Because that's the first, that's like the first word that we read in the scripture on discipleship. That's one of the first words that we read on discipleship. The beauty, the beauty of this right here, of this particular scope field, and like I said, we have it on online forward slash study page on the LOJ Society site, so you can probably use it on your mobile device. But the, the first investment, if you don't have a hard copy, would be to get a hard copy. Especially if this, I mean, I mean, this is a this is an investment which 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 which, which is profitable in, in in so many so many ways. You understand? In so many ways, uh, more than but inclusive of money, monetary ways. When you have the when you have the faith in God and know what is contained in in that birthright. And that covenant in Christ, if you're not under fears and phobias, you're not under doubt, but what you now are, 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 are able to do is to exercise, to build up your faith with prayer and fasting, but mainly study of this word. Study of this word is so very important. Let, let, me, let me see if, it, if they have a little section under here of... Um, of, of, of disciple, of disciple right here. They have fellowship. Fellowship, fellowship is actually, it also comes into the sense of this word for discipleship. Fellowship. Let me look up, let me look this up right here. We're just following the spirit on this one. We had some ideas that we were turning over in our heads and hearts, but the best thing to do basically is just to, you know, just to bring the word forward instead of trying to plan, plan. Though we, though we can plan a lecture, we just wanted to speak to ones and ones um, from I and I heart. Now, first of all, the first mention that we have of disciples, and for the disciples and those interested in the discipleship, the first word in disciple and disciple um, that we have in the Bible is Isaiah 8 and 16, where it says to seal the law among my disciples. Now this is one of the primary reasons that even with our Rastafari Civilical Studies, the RSS that we publish, that we put out, so forth and so on, um, from a week to week basis that is based on um, um, these Torah portion readings and feedings. And everyone should um, everyone should try to try to get a copy you know what I'm saying? She's trying to get a copy of this. You know, I have a copy of, of um, the set. And, and in another week or so, John will and will be able to publish um, the book five or the volume five or the fifth, the fifth part of the whole series. Now, why is that so important? Well, first of all, it, it, it helps us to do a mitzvah. You know what I'm saying? Do a mitzvah. Have you done a mitzvah today? You know what I'm saying? In other words, to, to keep the, the spirit of his, of his command, the, the commandment, and then to keep the commandment. You say, are you talking the law? Are you talking legalism? You have to understand that even in the New Testament, it speaks of the law of the spirit in Christ and the law of Christ in the spirit. So let's understand it's not lawlessness. 
this, those who say that they've been doing stuff in his name, Lord, Lord, Lordy, Lordy. He says, I don't know you. Get away from me, you works of iniquity, or you lawless ones. So that's just a little example so that you won't become confused. We are not under the law. We are in law. But the law was not made for a righteous man. But it's important that the law exists. Because it's not for us to be under it. You understand? Because we're no longer under the law of sin and death in Christ. So, so those things have to be understood. So that if, if there is a... Um, like if you have an inheritance, and this right here is speaking of the inheritance, the Bible, the Scriptures. And it's a great inheritance, I mean, in this world and in the world to come. And, and in the physical way of health and prosperity, and also in the spiritual way of, of, of calmness, of peace in your soul, which leads to health as well as wealth and the true wealth and prosperity. You know, this, then you would, you would be about studying this. You know what I'm saying? This is the reason why we study this. The first mention of the Bible, and I would say this is probably the ground, foundation of um, this is the, the, the rooting of it. We've been working recently on on some um, companions to the to the pocket size books, like um, so far all that we have been able to publish of, of our own teachings and writings of these particular two books right here, right? This one here, well, this is the first one, The Gospel of Him, right? And this one we've been able to publish, which is volume one, if you look at it. It's volume one, right? And this one on the language, Ethiopic, right? Our first language of the first language, right? Um, but there are others on discipleship, on Tawakido. I would call it more on more topical themes. You understand? And even there's other subject matters that we have addressed maybe briefly in the video that if Ja allows us the time, the opportunity, and other um, willing um, co-laborers to help us with that, with, with the overall labor, you understand? And that labor is the labor of Ja's love. So by doing this, by, by doing his will, we basically demonstrate his love. But the first work is to believe. Doesn't, doesn't Christ teach that? So let's, at this point, let's talk about um, so the first thing brought to far is to know what the name means. And then what is the meaning of, of, of the name? And then what is the true meaning of Ras Tesari? Even though I know it's spelled this way, Beta Ras Tesari, um, probably spells it in a more um, correct way with the T E S. E R I. This is more convention. It's almost similar to how we spell Hylos Elise. As you look at, is it, is it, um, is it uh, two L's or is it one L in Elise? You will see that um, when the imperial government authorized or approved those particular. Um, transliteration was two L's, and other media is one L. So that debate goes on, but the main thing is the language. The main thing is our language. You understand? But then language itself is an interesting subject matter. Because some of y'all might have been having, I'm not going to say problems, but challenges. Right? Challenges. When you have a, 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 a problem, as you mentioned earlier, or a challenge. See, those two ways of looking at it. Do you look at it as a problem, you know, or do you look at it as a challenge? Unfortunately, many of us in our our birth wrong, not the birth right, but in the birth wrong, we look at it as a problem, and we just try to um, do something about it, which tends to make it worse because we don't, first of all, recognize really that it's a problem and try to assess it, confront and assess it, confronting it, you see, not running from it, you know, not, not running away from it, not shifting the blame to somebody else for something else or something unrelated, but seeing, okay, in this problem, do I have any responsibility? I mean, honestly, honestly before God. But that's why one faith base is so important too. 
because if one doesn't trust John enough to study this word, to, 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 to hear it, to read it, to study it, to, to memorize it, and to meditate upon it, and I don't trust them, then I, I personally don't want a fellowship with them either. And I know that I'm within my divine right not to, you know, according to the word of God and Christ. So we could say, according to the Bible, and in particular, according to the testimony of my black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, the attaching Jesus Christ. So let's understand when he tells us, well, who is a brother? You understand? From who is not a brother. And if one comes to the house or to the community and brings not this doctrine, or they're saying I am, but they're not bringing this doctrine, we're not to allow them in our house, in our assembly. Now, some people say, oh, you can't really do that. That's why um, what they call religious or spiritual or churchical must be the foundation for us before government. In other words, we must build up our churchical community as people of faith in Rastafari before we really can fully operate on the governmental slash EWF, Ethiopian World Federation sort of a level. What I, what I cite to be the problem with many is that they have not sufficiently overstood the preamble of the EWF nor these key words, right, to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia in the preamble, nor these key words, you understand, in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 2A, to promote love and goodwill among Ethiopians at home and abroad, and thereby to maintain the integrity and sovereignty of Ethiopia, to disseminate the ancient Ethiopian culture among its members. See, it is so interesting that this Constitution was written in that way, and that these elements would be put and, and kind of codified and, and it, it was memorialized in this document. You understand? Memorialized in this document. The preamble is so very important. The preamble really sets up everything else. So how can we go from there and then get into the bylaws? You understand? Or even get deeper into the Constitution. If we understand the divine heritage is, is, is a faith base. You understand a faith base. If one is not of the faith, how or why should you trust them? I mean, if they claim to be one of us. It's not to become dogmatic. Some people think, okay, this is to be dogmatic. No. It's to be right and exact. You understand? It's to be right and exact. One says, I am Rastafari. I love Salasia. And then they're speaking down on the Bible or speaking down on Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Yesus Christus, Jesus Christ. You know something is wrong. You know, and if they say that they are Ethiopian, right, and they're fully grown, and they're still running around with ID in their pocket that says that they have a foreign Gentile European name, you know something is wrong. You're faking something. That doesn't mean that we find ourselves in this predicament and we're waking up to it. I'm just saying that, I'm just saying, you know, and there's a very straight point on that, and we can go a little bit deeper into this world, but we want to stick on the cycle, right? So Christ now speaks to us concerning um, the cycle, right? And he speaks to us that here that one cannot Right? Be his disciple and he gives certain specific certain specific um words to that effect. Let me go right here, um it talks about disciples came to him. 
I see this part, uh, Luke. I'm looking at Luke as well. A couple of verses here that I can touch on. Um, I want to touch on the one where, when he says, um, when he says, let me, do, let me get the concordance right here. So now these books, some of them you can get and utilize from the internet. Others, you need to make the investment. You see, you need to make the investment. And sometimes when people see the price of certain books and stuff, or, you know, the cost of education, education in this present world, and we have to get through this world to get to the world to come. So in this present world, it's just another, another, we have to count the cost. You see what I'm saying? But the, th the great thing about education is that no one can ever take it away from you, the truth or the knowledge of the truth. You know, the good news is that the devil, Satan can't read your mind. The devil can't read your mind. Satan can't read your mind. The only thing that the devil can do, you understand, is read your heart or your intent by what you are saying. So in discipleship, the key word being discipline, we come into the true discipline of Christ. We come into the true discipline of the black Messiah. Now we've been speaking of the black Messiah, and you all might know the phrase from the Cohen Self Pro program, the Antichrist agenda against the lost sheep and the lost sheep leadership, right? So called Cohen Self Pro. Example, they said, stop the rise of the black Messiah. But who is the black Messiah? Christ in his kingly character, Kedamawi, Christ.